All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our last series with um, the wonderful Jose Antonio Bowen um, on, oh, I'm trying to find the, um, the correct title, uh, AI Assignment <laughs> and Assessment. That one, that, yes. <laughs> uh, my name is Sochi Tirado. I am the Distance Education Coordinator at Imperial Valley College and a faculty support at CBC. And I'm excited to introduce once again our facilitator, Jose Antonio Bowen. Jose has won teaching awards at Stanford and Georgetown was dean at Miami and Southern Methodist University and president of Goucher College. He has written over 100 scholarly articles. He is the author of many books, including most recently, Teaching with AI, A Practical Guide to a New Era of Human Learning with um, C. Edward Watson. Uh, Stanford honored him as a distinguished alumni scholar, and he has presented keynotes and workshops at more than 400 campuses and conferences in 46 states and 20 countries around the world. He is now a senior fellow for the American Association of College and Universities and also does innovation and inclusion consulting for a wide variety of Fortune 500 companies. During the webinar, I will share a survey link for your feedback. Uh, I'll post it in the chat um, around 40 minutes and then every 15 minutes after, please complete it to help at one improve our future program offerings. Um, while at one doesn't offer badges for this webinar, if you do need proof, you'll be able to use that survey, Re make sure to request a copy and uh, that can serve as proof of attending the webinar. Um, the webinar is recorded and a copy will be available in a few days in our at one webinar site. Now, without further ado, I turn it over to the wonderful Jose that has already taught us so much and I'm sure we're all excited to learn more about AI. Go ahead, Jose. All right. So hoping everybody can hear me and it's loud enough. Um, I've put a couple of uh, links. So the first link I put in is uh, the link to the slides and citations. It's the same link, although I have updated uh, the citation 47 pages since last time. Uh, it's not that different, but there's always new studies I'm adding. Um, and then the last one I've just put in is the prompt page. So if you would start by going here um, to this page, uh, I'm going to stop that share and show you. Um, so we're going to go, we're going to go here to this page. So that's the page that has the, the links. All right. And so open up your favorite AI. You just need one for the moment, but we should probably, um, you know, I'm hoping you'll try a couple different tools. Um, in general, my advice, uh, as you if you remember um, from early on, is that you know pick a pick one of the big four, right? ChatGPT, which is also Copilot, Claude, Gemini, although the paid versions are better, especially for Gemini, or Meta, which is free and open source. Those are the big four. So they're the smartest models, um, but they're also the most naive. So my advice is pick one. And if you don't get the answer that you like, give it some more instruction. Add the word innovative, different. Um, you are an expert, right? All of those things we talked about in the previous thing. So, so try to refine as if you were talking to a smart but super naive intern, right? Um, and so, uh, but once you get the prompt, so ooh, now I'm getting answers that I like, or I'm getting something that I like, then copy and paste that prompt into another browser with a different AI and see how they're different, but but only do the experimentation about oh the I didn't I didn't tell it I wanted you to right explain the theory of this math problem not solve it what are the theorems that are being used what's the thinking behind this kind of right you have to often do those so I'm going to give you uh, one example um, so hopefully now you're logged into some uh, a free one will do for this. Uh, and you remember I, I mentioned, uh, so there's a whole variety here on the web page. But if you scroll down here to workshops, right? So we've done the getting started. Um, what I want you to do first is I want you to scroll down past analyzing patterns to create a simulation or interactive game. And I want you to take this whole prompt. So you're going to notice that this is long, right? Because the way I wrote this, and again, I didn't use any coding, but I'm going to highlight the whole thing and then I'm going to go to Claude but it does it it'll do it anywhere um so and oh and by the way to the, to the, what's in the chat I, I don't think you have to pay um 
you know, at the moment, Claude, the free Claude and the free chat GPT are pretty good, but be aware that this changes every couple of weeks, months. And so, um, you know, chat GPT routinely will give you a, the best model for a couple of weeks and then take it away. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're not talking to Einstein anymore. You're, you're talking to Homer Simpson. And so just be aware that, right, you need to see which model you're using. Claude recently has been saying, oops, sorry, Sonnet's busy. We'll let you talk to Haiku, which is their much um, lower model. And so you want to be talking to Sonnet, um, which is free. It's just not always available all the time. All right. So here's what I want you to do. So, so first of all, look at the prompt a little bit. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, the first thing you should do is just hit return and play the game. See what it tells you to do. So, so copy and paste. And you know what I'm going to do? I am going to. Uh, let's see if this. I don't think. I don't. I don't think uh, Zoom will let me paste the whole thing. I think it's too long. But I am going to try and take this whole thing, and. If you want, yeah, no, it's too long for Zoom. Sorry, uh, I didn't like that. Uh, let me see if it'll do half of it. Nope, doesn't like that either. So, okay, you've got to go to my web page. Sorry, um, and you've got to copy it from there. All right. So once you copy it into a an AI, hit return, and then I want you to spend a couple minutes just playing the game. Now, for those of you who are not logged. So go ahead and do that and ignore me. But for those of you who don't have an AI uh, open, um, so here's so here's what happens. It, it says, okay, sure, I'm going to do this this presidential economic simulation. Pick a pick a year. So I pick a year, January 2016, right? Um, but you could pick any year from it. You know, tells you 1800 to whatever, um, and then it. I, it tells you what the economic situation is, right? GDP growth, unemployment, inflation, Federal Reserve, stock market, national debt, trade, et cetera. Political context, right? It's who's divided. It was an election year. Oh, so you're the newly inaugurated president. What do you want to do? So I actually said, oh, what kinds of things can I do? And then it tells me what some things I can do, right? It gives me a list because I, you know, I asked it, what else could I do? And then I said, oh, okay, let's put a 10% import on all goods. And so it says, okay, so let's see what, you know, as president, you do have this authority. Here's what you could do. And then here's what happens. Um, and then it says, now what do you want to do? Right. It gives, it gives me some, this, so it gives me an economic update and then says, okay, what would you like to do? And I could now say, um, I want to close the IRS. Right. Um, uh, so, but it tells me I can't. What? Why not? Um, and I think in this version, it, it doesn't tell me, I, I didn't ask it to tell me what the why, but in, in the other versions, it'll, the version you have, it should tell you why. All right, so again, just, just, just play for a couple of minutes. And so again, it should, it should work on any AI. It should ask you what you want to do. Again, you can try to do something funny. Uh, any questions? Is this working? Hopefully, yes. All right, so it did give me the closest legal actions. It's interesting. You don't have to do the whole four years, but just do a couple of cycles. Questions, problems. Jose, a few people just joined. If you don't mind um, reiterating what you were having everyone work on. Ah, okay. So, um, what I've asked people to do is um, to go to my website. Uh, if you click, you click on that link. Um, and then the, at the top of the website are a couple of models. So, you know, click on a Claude or Chat GPT or your favorite AI. Um, and then scroll down past the black box that says uh, workshop prompts. You're going to go to the third category, which is create a simulation game. And I want you to copy that entire prompt and put it into an AI and then just play the game for a couple of rounds. Right. So, um, I've instructed it to 
to update you every three months. And then at the end of four years, I've said, tell me how I did. Um, uh, yeah, well, it can't, I don't think the 2025, I think I may have given it a cutoff because it doesn't know what the politics are going to be or the economic situation is going to be in 2025. Um, uh, so I think it'll do 2024. Um, because it, the right, it can tell you what's going on currently. Um, but then I've asked it to update every three months and to kind of play out the scenario. But then what's interesting, if you don't pick 2024, but if you pick any previous year, like I'm 1960 and I'm president for four years, then at the end of it, it say, I say, how do I, you know, it says, well, you want to know how you did? I said, well, yeah, how did I do? So how did my economic policies compare with who the actual present president was? You know, how did, how did I do? Um, you know, compared to 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 Kennedy Johnson, um, et cetera. So I and so it'll say, well, you you know, you did this, and it'll give you an analysis of how well you played the game, which is interesting, right? For a couple of reasons. First of all, it's interesting because I can then grade that. I can say, so give the student a grade based upon if they beat the sitting president, you know, they get an A. If they did worse than the sitting president, you know, or I could say, or here's a rubric, you know. I want you to evaluate AI. I want you to evaluate how well the student played the game. Did they ask good questions? Did they did they try a lot of stuff that was illegal? You know, did they figure it out? Did they get better at you? I could give it, I could give it a rubric. I could say to the AI, grade it based upon these criteria, and then uh paste that grade in the LMS and that's whatever. I could, so I could actually create a little module. So now what I want you to do, okay, so you'll you can you can play later. <laughs> what I want you to do is look at the prompt, right? So let's go here. So let's look at the prompt. This is a little shorter version. So I want you to think about how I did this. Um, so I started these. I said, well, create a presidential sim. Right, so you're going to, I want you to make your own now. So create a simulation game of whatever and about what, right? So that's kind of a general instruction. And then, right, so you can, what I would do is, is copy and paste my entire prompt either into another window, another AI, or to start a new chat, right? That, that'll, otherwise it won't, it'll be confused, but start a new chat, or you could put it into a Word document and you could edit it there and then you can copy and paste. But I want you to copy and paste the whole thing into a Word document, into a new, a new window. And now I want you to change the conditions into a game that's something you know about. So I want them to, you're a chemist, uh, you're a foreign language teacher, you're a new kindergarten teacher trying to do a lesson, but whatever it is, come up with some sort of, you know, I'm an accountant. I, I want to, I'm a, I'm a new risk manager for the university of whatever I wanted, you know, I mean, whatever it is. But so a couple of things will stay the same, right? I want you to guide me, the student, as if I were, give, give it a role. Uh, I, you know, it doesn't have to be a multi-year simulation, uh, but right, but you, you're going to tell it, but notice I'm just using language, right? I didn't, there's no coding here. Um, right, start, you have to have a start, start by asking me, the student, to do something, right? Uh, then reply, right? I asked it to reply with that. Um, so when I did this, I started, of course, and it's like, oh, I forgot to do that. I have to tell it what, you, I, you know, at first it was just, it's 2024 or whatever I gave it to you. And I said, oh, you know, you could pick a year. I could say it could be any year. Um, then I had to say, do not allow me to propose action that's not constitutionally or legally possible. Uh, and then I wanted to say, oh, okay, well, point out if they exceed the, pre and you'll see, I said, cite the sources, right? Cite the sources for the limitations. Do not make suggestions until I get stuck or ask for them. So initially I'd said, make suggestions. And of course it was too helpful. It said, well, as the president, here are the seven things you could do. And it's like, no, no, don't do that. Right, because that's better for for you to do not make suggestions. Sorry. So I, I kind of refined the prompt as I went along um, because, right, I wanted to, you know, I, I wanted to make the game better. So I, I would write a prompt, I would play it, and then I'd go back and refine the prompt. And so I'd say, oh, okay. So then I had, once I suggested this last paragraph I added later, right, assess my strategy. So that's kind of after we've played the game, update me and how, what, what are the consequences of my actions? And then I, I could, I could add another paragraph that says, so I want you to grade the student based upon these criteria, et cetera. So what I want you to do is to try to create your own simulation game. Uh, you know, I'm a, prompt me, I'm on Shark Tank. I want you to, to, to interview me like you were Mark Cuban, and I want you to press me hard about my business plan, right? Or I'm a, I'm a new nurse. I've just, you know, I'm on my first month um, in the hospital and 
uh, you are the doctor I'm assigned to, you know, or you're a patient that I'm interviewing, you know, give me very, but right. Just, just create the conditions in language um, and then see if it works. Uh, so Laurie, so this is part four, but if you're, if this is your first time, that's okay. Um, if you're, if this is your first time, um, just go to my, that same page and, and try one of the earlier prompts, right? Try one of the first workshop prompts. Um, you know, give me 20 suggestions for something. If, if that, let me know if that's not what you're asking. Um, but yeah, I know this seems advanced. But I guess what I'm trying, I am, so in some ways, this is the, like the super, super, super advanced. On the other hand, what I'm trying to get you to, to, to try is that actually, once you have the idea to do something, like I want to create a game for my students to play, and you've, right, it's not that hard to say, right, so, so look, erase everything that you don't need. Don't, right, if my prompt is not useful, erase it all. Um, but uh, you know, I, I found it was useful to sort of think, oh, okay, so create a game like this. Here are the conditions. Here's what I want you to do. Just tell it what to do. And so I know, I'm sorry, but I, I'm, st I'm actually, I'm starting with the most advanced thing on purpose. You'll see the method for my madness, hopefully, hopefully, uh, because I do, I do want you to try creating a simulation, right? So don't make one so complicated. Um, but think about your field. Think about, oh, I want students to be able to try, you know, using this kind of equation to solve this kind of problem, right? Give them easier things. If they get it wrong, make it harder. The, the point is that it's language and that you, you just have to think of the conditions. And you the way that you figure this out is that you, you say, oh, I tried that. Oh, it didn't. Oh, you know, I. so again, when you play your own game, as when you played my game, Try to beat it. <laughs> Try to mess it up. Try to say, okay, close the IRS and then see, oh, I didn't account for that. So um, to Patricia's question, so a lot of these already exist, right? So you can go, for example, to uh, chat GPT um, and you can look, explore GPTs, right? And it will, in fact, take you to, and you can then put in simulation, nursing simulation, Shark Tank simulation, right? You can ask it to do things, all right? So um, a lot of these have been created. Um, and if, right, I'm not expecting you to do the whole thing right this minute, but I wanted to give you the idea that it's not that hard. Um, when I was on my on an airplane last week, I, I tried to get it to write a short story. Right? I had an idea for a short story. I'm not much of a writer, um, but I had this idea. And so I, I kept, so I, the prompt got longer and longer. I said, oh, okay, they need to have more. Something has to happen in the middle. Don't just resolve this. Here's the situation. You know, here's the, make the main character, whatever. And so then it wrote me a story. So the, the idea here is that I, I use this simulation in place of a lecture on macroeconomics and presidential power, Right. That instead of saying, okay, here are all the things the president can't do. Let me list them. Here are all the consequences to tariffs. Let me, right, I could do a lot of slides. I could do this. Or I could say, hey, students, I'm emailing you a prompt. And I email them all the prompt, just as, or I, I, like I did with you, I gave them the link to the website. And then I say, I want you. And so in class, I say, okay, everybody open up your laptop and let's spend 10 minutes playing this game. So they play the game. And then I say, okay, so what did you learn? Did anybody try tariffs? What happened when you tried tariffs? Well, do you think that's right? Do you think that's what really would happen? What else, right? And so now we have a conversation about macroeconomics, but they've learned by doing, they've actually practiced something. And so really what I'm getting at is, is, that, is that you could create some simulations for people to, to practice something in as an activity. And yeah, you could ask. So, so again, if if you're yeah, if you really want to say, I need you to write a prompt for me that will instruct an AI uh, to create a game. But I think what will happen is that you will find yourself going, oh, but here's the way I really want it to work. Right? You still have to tell it how you really want it to work. You know, let the student try four times and then give them a, a you know raspberry. Uh, don't make it too hard. You know, be whatever. All right. So um, I promise it's not all that hard. <laughs> I, I would, but I wanted us to just kind of dive in and like, right? So as I said a couple of sessions ago, 
try making, try to see if you can get AI to do something you don't think it can do, right? That's kind of fun. But the concept for this is what concepts could you teach in a game? That's the, that's the, that's the pedagogy piece, right? You'll learn how to do the AI prompting piece. The real question is, is, oh, if I could quickly and easily in 10 minutes design an activity or a game that I could have my students do, what, what could I then not have to lecture about? What could I then like, change the way I set up my class, et cetera? So are there certain tasks, especially that are most important for students? Okay, so hopefully your your brain is spinning. Um, and I'm just gonna remind you about a couple of things we've already done and then we'll dive back in. So last week we talked about cheating, about the, the change in average that AI can now do better than average work. So we have to raise our standards. But we also talked about how students are using AI to cheat. So I gave you some examples of things that you can do, right? Things that are more personal, uh, increasing motivation, right? So, so interview a friend and write about their life, right? People, they just, it's a little more motivating. Um, there are some tools that are discussion boards like Perusal and Hypothesis. Um, so Perusal actually has a tool that doesn't let you cut and paste, which makes it harder to put AI in it. Um, so, uh, and also I think they're lower stakes. It is true, students are still using AI to write short posts. So this isn't foolproof, um, but it's a, it's a, it's a method. Um, this is interesting because um, the topic is about AI. So this is from the MLA. Um, so select an article, right, from, from the news or something that either exaggerates or per perpetuates the hype around AI. And then I give it to students and I say, okay, so what I want you to do is to, uh, you know, put it in uh, a, a document and then I want you to edit it or I want you to identify all the pitfalls. Where is it being hyperbolic? Um, when is it an uncritical comparison with historical? It's just like a calculator. Or when is it unjustified claims about, right? And so the students are now doing analysis, but since they're doing it about AI, and yes, they could cheat, but uh, I, I think it's a pretty good assignment because um, they, they, they do care about the environment, about risks and rewards of using AI. Um, I also talked about DEER last week. Um, which is one of my favorites, which is when I give students a writing assignment, rather than just say, write me a seven page paper. I, I have them talk first about, so what are the, the stages of the project? Let's define, okay, so there's gonna be thinking, there's gonna be uh, brainstorming, outlining, writing a first draft, writing a second draft, editing. Uh, I was always taught, old fashioned, you write your three page paper, and then you take your last paragraph and you destroy the rest. And your last paragraph is probably where you want to start. And you start all over, right? Because now you know what you want to say. And that first draft, because as you figure out what you want to say. So I would have students do a little bit of that in class and then say, so now use that last paragraph and have AI rewrite your essay using that as the first paragraph. Or I might say, well, now ask your AI to brainstorm some better ideas. Or now take your whole essay and have AI edit this for grammar. So those are different ways of using AI in your essay at the beginning, at the middle, at the end, rewriting it. But then I ask the students to reflect, how did this help or hurt your writing, right? Which is the better product? Which essay is the best and you think will get the best grade? But separately from that, where did you, what did you learn differently? I don't actually say, where is the best learning? I say, what did you learn differently in the different projects, the different ways of trying to write this essay? And so, uh, as you know, I was told this morning, um, you know, when you want to get out of the pose, that's when the benefit starts, right? <laughs> Fitness classes, right? So, uh, so getting students to recognize that, oh, the discomfort, some of that energy is really, really useful. Um, there's also a way to do this in, uh, right, with with a template assignment, right? Uh, so I have AI draft. Here's the draft ask AI to do a version of my story, my essay, whatever. Then I copy and paste it into a Word document, track changes. And now I ask students to improve the AI draft. Notice that most of our assignments are, we're not designed to be good AI prompts, which is why when the students just copy and paste your assignment into AI, they don't get a very good response because you didn't write it as a to, for a naive intern, well, most of us, right? You didn't go into that much detail. So write me a three to five page paper on Hamlet, you're gonna get generic, 
right? So the student gets a generic essay and thinks, no, it's okay. But the usefulness to this is you can then say, okay, um, have the AI write a write a draft, um, and um, let me. I, I want to come to this, uh, Dimitri. So if you'll get off mic and you can talk to me in a minute. Um, so here's a draft, because this is of course what's going to happen in the workplace. Now put it into Word. Now update it, make it better. But then in the comments, tell me why did you make those changes? What is better about each of those changes? Right? What are the trade-offs between simpler, more elegant, et cetera, et cetera? Um, and then, you know, how did you add to, to this process for an employer? Because this is in fact what our students are going to do when they graduate, right? If you're in marketing, if you're in if you're any kind of journalist or you're a writer, you do press review and communications, um, you are going to have AI doing drafts, right? You are not going to have junior people doing drafts that you edit. You will eventually, right? Why would you do that? You could use AI for cheaper. Um, all right. So, um, so Dimitri, I, I'm not quite sure when you ask our students, what would you want our students to do this? Uh, are you are you talking specifically about something that you want to talk about? Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't uh, hit the unmute fast enough. I I just I'm I, I got a couple of responses that made sense in terms of students struggling. I just don't understand it, and unless we were doing this in business, why would we want our students to be using AI to write their papers for them? Well, so there are two things. So one is um, because unless they're going to graduate school and. In, maybe even if they're going to graduate school, um, they are going to be using AI as a tool in the writing process in the same way that most of us use a spell checker, right? So Grammarly, which they've mostly been using, which will fix, it'll do certain things. Uh, no, spell checker did not make me a better speller, right? So for example, let's say you have nursing students. So nurses have to do nurses notes. They have to, you know, what did the doctor do, et cetera. And AI can do this better than most students. But of course, the students still have to know, well, are these good nurses notes, right? They have to be able to evaluate them, which is not as much fun, maybe, uh, but they have to be able to evaluate them. And so another assignment would be have the AI produce good, bad, and ugly nurses notes, and then have the students figure out which are which, right? Can they evaluate them? Um, but yeah, they're, right. we want students to write because writing is thinking, but I also want them to figure that out. So part of what I'm suggesting is that um, by letting them use AI under certain conditions and then having them do the, the push-ups the hard way, I can get them to the point where they think, oh, you know, I used AI for this, but then I didn't learn what I was supposed to learn. The problem is that students don't always know what we want them to learn, right? If what they, if what they think we want is, I want a beautiful paper that has perfect spelling and grammar, then the AI can produce that with a little help and write. But if I say, well, I want you to think about this because I want you to be thinking. I, I want you to struggle with this because that's good for you, that, con that, that the learning starts when the confusion starts. But they don't know that. Does that, does that help at all? Um, uh, no, not really, because I agree. Spell check did not make me a better speller. It made me a worse speller. And so in the long run, if we're doing this on a regular basis, I understand the theory of getting our students to really question what's good, what's not good, how can we make mine better, but are they going to? Well, I mean, I think it's up to us to try to figure that out, but you're right. I mean, look, there, there is a potential future here where the AI does most of the writing in students' jobs in the same way that spell checking does most of the spell checking in all of our jobs. Uh, and that our phone does most of the remembering of phone numbers, right? And, you know, Plato was worried about us, you know, being less able to remember stuff when we got books and he was right. So, uh, you know, so all I can say is that's a healthy skepticism. Let's not, you know, that's not insignificant. Let's, let's keep that in our, in our mind and let's come back to this in an hour and see if we've made any progress. Um, Okay. Um, wow, I love what, what Scott just did. So there are lots of programs that will help with the process, right? My favorite of these is lex.page. And so I, I suggest that you try this, but you can do this in Google Docs or Word and track changes, et cetera. 
But these other programs will will do this with FERPA compliance, and they'll actually help students. So so Lex is interesting because Lex actually gives you right as a writing canvas. It like it'll do a cliche check. That's useful. It'll check for brevity, right? It's like having a a tutor or a mentor looking over your shoulder going, should we check? Because it, it suggests, do you want to check for, and it gives you a list of things. You want to check for grammar. Do you want to check for brevity, et cetera? Um, so I think it actually works as a tutor in an interesting way. Um, another assignment might be to say to students, okay, try to get the AI to reproduce this text by Virginia Woolf. Um, it, right? You, you may have to push it a little bit because now with the copyright protections, it doesn't want to do that, which is a good thing. Um, but, you know, Claude will do this and you know, try to reproduce the first, the first paragraph of Mrs. Dalloway. It won't be exactly right because it doesn't have a memory base it's checking. So then I say to students, try to make it better, analyze the result. What is the AI got wrong? So this isn't writing, but this is literary analysis, right? Is it the style? Is it the voice? Uh, is, is there, um, you know, what is it that, that that the AI got wrong? And so in order to fix it, you've got to actually spend some more time with uh, with the uh, with the text itself. And, and I will come back to, to some of these questions, because, look, there's no question that AI look spell checking and 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 GPS did not make us any smarter. Um, and there's the, certainly the risk that this will happen. In fact, I'm it's almost a certainty, I think in the way that GPS, that we all use it, it's invaluable, um, but it's all made it worse. Um, so the question is, how do I help them to do more of the hard work and how do I set them up at least to have more successful lives? And I'm just glad I'm not 18 right now. Um, so I talked last week also about, um, right, sell the cookie, not the recipe, start with why, so that your policy, your instructions for assignments can't just be, here is the assignment, here is what to do. We have to be much more specific about why this learning is important. This is true pre-AI, of course, right? A true, I think I told you this, maybe I didn't. Um, you know, my daughter's in college and she has some friends over for dinner and I'm in the kitchen making dinner and the kids are out there talking. And so I come in with the chicken or whatever and they say, so Professor Bowen, we, we're trying to figure out why do some professors only assign the odd numbered problems in chemistry or math? I say, well, you know, uh, Sometimes the answers for the even ones were in the back of the book, or they wanted to give you half as many problems. No, tell us the truth. Come on, tell us the truth. Right? <laughs> what can, yes, an international conspiracy of, against the odd numbers. I, I, and the truth is, the students don't understand, right? They, they think we're just assigning busy work. And so I think one of the things we have to do is be much clearer about learning outcomes all the time. So, okay, so we've already had. Uh, some questions, some thoughts. Um, and if there's anything else, I, I let me give you a few more things to think about and do since we're already getting, uh, unless there's something burning in somebody's mind. Let me give you another way to think about this. So AI is going to change creativity in ways that will surprise you, but once you see them, we'll say, oh, I could use that. So two ways. One is AI is uninhibited. Right, um, it, it, and you're 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 a socially inhibited creature. You're a human. You know this, and the reason you know this is because you've been to a faculty meeting, right? You don't say everything that comes into your head. You you filter. So AI doesn't do that. It's like collaborating with an alien, right? It just blurts out whatever it's thinking. So we call this um, hallucinations. But of course, what do you call a human who hallucinates a little bit? An artist. Right. So that creativity of, hey, let's try putting peanut butter and chili pepper together on a cookie. Right. That that, you know, that's crazy. But that's right, that's creativity. What are some new things we could put together? So I'll let you read this poem because a lot of people think, wow, well, you know, it's never going to write poems. So this was a poem. Write a poem about what it's like to be you and AI in your own voice. not the best poem, but it is probably surprising if you've only looked at like average, you know, responses to Hamlet essays. It's not a bad poem, right? So it can do interesting, weird things. Number two, 
creativity comes from quality. So sorry, comes from quantity, not quality. So we think, oh, I've got to have one really good idea. But the way that you get to one really good idea is to have 500 mediocre ideas, right? You, that that process. So we send in creativity all the time. It's about quantity, um, not quality. You get quality from quantity. So um, in design thinking, we do this all the time, right? We think, okay, humans like the second half of this. We like, what's the solution? We like convergent thinking. What am I going to do? Right? Where are we going to go to dinner? Right? And what we don't, what most of us don't like is, well, we could do Chinese or there's this new fusion place and there's a, it's like, stop, right? My wife is like, where do you want to go to dinner? Right? Because the left-hand side of this is ambiguous, the divergent thinking. What are the other options? What else are the assumptions? What are the problems? So for creativity, we need more of that right, expansion of possibilities, right? So um, I showed you this, I think, before. Right. So this is an example of an empathy interview and in design thinking. I want to get I want to design a new product. I want to get to know my whatever my patient. I want. So this is a variation of the simulation thing we've tried before. Um, right. And so what I want you to look at in the prompt is I'm trying to gain a richer understanding of problem. Blah. You will help by responding as a trusted and honest. Potential customer, student, whatever. Expert. Undecided voter, whatever. Question my assumptions when necessary. Tell me stories, etc. So, this is a prompt. It's also on my website. Um, that initial website. You can I would I would customize this to an area where you know what the answer is going to be. And so, what what's a group of people that you've already interviewed in a focus group or your family or somebody that you know some kind of voters or people in your party or your whatever, um, and then see if it gets you a good response. And the data says that it it does. Uh, in fact, the other thing I will show you about this is the actual, uh, someone did a, um, I think it's, here it is. Okay, so I need to, um, so if you want to try that, you can try that. Um, but I'm going to also show you, yeah, go ahead, question. Um, so this is a, a recent paper uh, that, tried to replicate a, the you know a bunch of social science experiments that initially had used 104,000 surveys. That's a lot of surveys, right? So you could you could go out and interview 104,000 people, um, or you could ask AI to pretend. Uh, there are philosophical and ethical issues. I'm not sure if a journal would take this as research because it's not. But for my students, if I want them to interview somebody they don't know, interview somebody from the other party about this issue, uh, interview somebody in another country, without traveling there. There are ways to do this. And it turns out that AI is pretty good at this, right? Um, so that's another tool for, for, again, doing interviews. And again, maybe it's just getting practice. Um, I heard today that today's students have spent, a, they spend a thousand hours a year less talking to their friends than they did 20 years ago. Yeah, so I'm nervous too, but as I said, they're already on their phones. Um, I could have it analyze problems, right? Where are people still confused? What are their other other th other things I haven't noticed about this pattern? Um, future priming. So humans have a status quo bias, right? We have a hard time imagining what it could be like in 20 years. And so a typical exercise in a in a creativity class would be try to solve this problem, but now imagine it's 20 years in the future. I know. That's tricky. Almost um, an hour or, left to go. Um, or you could ask an AI to do that, right? 20 years from now, how will assumptions about the problem have changed? Right? I, it's just another, again, it's, it's about expanding possibility. Um, so problem solving is, is about solving, but it's also about what else am I missing? What are my assumptions? How could I think differently? Um, list, create a list of approaches that have not yet been tried to crack this problem, right? So try one of these into your AI, right? Try any one of these and then give it something that you know about, right? Um, again, if you want a really good answer, you know, give it more detail, but you could just say, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to crack this problem. As you may know, the alpha fold, which is the protein folding um, AI, um, Right. This used to be every a dissertation in biochemistry was often, you know, you pick one protein and then figure out, you know, through the process of five years of 
how it folds. And AI has now solved that problem and taken away that dissertation topic because the, the million or so plus um, have now been solved by AI. So, right, there are ways that it can help us um, advance science and do interesting kinds of things. All right. Oh, um, I don't, somebody, can somebody help um, Jennifer? Other questions? I'm looking at questions now. Yeah, to 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 I'm trying to to give give us ways to integrate it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, how can I help convince my faculty to? I mean, so actually, my my answer to that question: How do I describe to faculty colleagues? Um, my suggestion is to ask a group of students. Um, to make a video about how they're using AI, just right. It's always better when it comes directly from students. Um, you know, I, I did that. I had a scheduling problem, and I said, you know, just make a. I said, I said, do you want to go talk to the faculty senate? Yeah, you know what the answer was to that. I said, well, how about a video that I can show them? And that was that was easier. Um, uh, okay, I was asked a question. So, so that the demo predicting tool. So. I mean, we don't actually know why it works, but we know that if if I so the one that I use, I think I um, let me again if if you want to be off uh, trying one of those tools on the last side, that's great. Um, so here is um, Here's one that I did. So I, I have my students in entrepreneurship, you know, design a new product. And so I did this with Latino entrepreneurs. So there's my prompt on the screen uh, and there's the response. Um, and so I did two things. One is instead of having students spend two weeks out there interviewing people, um, I said, well, start by doing this because maybe your idea is a bust from the beginning, right? Get, figure, get some empathy, right? Before you go test your product, um, what's the real problem? And so you can see the prompt there. And so I'm a Latino entrepreneur and I have family members who do this. So it's like, I got all the things I would have expected. If you'd, if you'd asked my, my tío, you know, you'd, you'd say, there's a tanda, there's a this, you know, what, what, you, you know, they talked about the informal economy. What's it like going to a bank? Oh yeah. Some young guy in a crisp shirt who didn't know about, you know, didn't care about my passion. He just wanted to know why I didn't have the right documents, you know, how did it feel? What were the documents you needed? So, so again, I would play around with that prompt in an area that you know about, because I found that this was exactly what I would have expected my students to get if I had set them up with a focus group, which means I now trust it with other populations. So if I wanted to learn about what would, what would 18 year olds looking for a degree in X be most interested in, right? What would eight, what would 20 year olds who are about to take my course in this be expecting? Right, I could actually get some preliminary data. Does that help? Um, and again, that treatment effect site you can, I think, is um, all right. So, okay. There's more. There's more. I know. Some of you are done already. Um. Uh, okay. So, but testing, I could test an idea. I have an idea. How might people react? Um, I have a new pricing plan, uh, right? So companies are doing this, all, right? All of this, folk, uh, how are my millennials going to respond different than my Gen Z to the new iPhone pricing plan? All right, this is already happening all over the place. Um, and here's another one. So you have Trader Joe's in California. I think it's from California, right? Um, so, Using so I had this. I came home from Trader Joe's and thought, I wonder if AI could come up with new products because somebody has that job, right? So, using examples from the Trader Joe's frequent flyer, create 500 new Trader Joe's products and write descriptions. So, you don't necessarily have to want to go out and run to buy crunchy Thai peanut tofu bites, but look at the description. I mean, that looks pretty Trader Joe's, right? I mean, it did capture the style of Trader Joe's because I told it the fearless flyer was the right. So am I done? Do I have a job? Well, of course that, right? So now what I wanna do is, okay, so use this as an idea generator 
Now pick 10, maybe iterate. So I like the tofu ideas I want, but no peanuts, right? So no nuts. So other ideas for tofu bites, right? Give me 10 more ideas. I mean, then I might want to market test them, right? So I could either market test them with humans, or I could say, so I want to do an interview with a Trader Joe's customer who buys product X and ask them how they'd be interested in crunchy Thai peanut tofu bites. Or I could go out and do a real focus group and see if people like the taste. Um, I could iterate. And then I have to demonstrate the viability. Well, how much do they cost? What's the supply chain? Right? There's a lot to do here. But this is a great assignment for students that's partially done with AI, not fully. But AI is a tool in the same way that Microsoft Word or a spell checker is, is a tool or a calculator is a tool. Um, and so AI can do more. Yes, they can cheat. But by creating some parameters here, students are more likely to do some work. Okay. So uh, the data is pretty clear that, right, in a, in a number of contexts, um, ideas from AI are already surpassing that of humans. So in this, this is a, a, an entrepreneurship uh, startup contest that, that AI mostly won. Um, this is the alternate uses test, right? What are the, all the things you can do with a rope, a box, or a pencil beside the thing there, right? So And so humans can list, you know, a few, uh, and AI can list a lot more. What's interesting about this is that the AI wins on average in every category, but AI almost never has the most creative idea. The same is true in other surveys, right? So look, Christopher Nolan has no competition from AI, but screenwriters for CSI, Law and Order, right? Things that have, right? They're probably, right? They, they, could, they probably need to worry, which is why they went on strike. Um, in this study, this came out just a week ago, um, that a thousand scientists were using AI um, and they discovered more novel chemical structures, more patents, uh, more product prototypes. The company's happy. But notice, the AI generation led to more ideas, but evaluating those ideas wasn't as much fun as coming up with new ones, right? The jobs were less satisfying. I think that's a really interesting, important finding. So um, some ways that AI could improve your teaching. So I think I've talked a lot about this, but I'm hoping this is, this is obvious, right? AI can help you generate examples, explore possibilities, right? Expand, stimulate thinking. What else am I, what are some other ways I could get students excited about this general education course, right? What are some other ways I could get students excited? What are some other analogies I could use? So here are some examples, um, right? Uh, I'd like examples from other cultures right, that might appeal to different students in a different part of the world um, or from different religious backgrounds or different cultural backgrounds. Um, I want analogies. Give me 20 analogies that would be relevant for non-majors, for engineering majors, for non-binary students, um, right? So these are all just ways, again, is it going to be perfect? No, but I don't care because I'm going to evaluate the response. Remember, education is supposed to be about two things, asking better questions evaluating responses. We already teach that. And AI demands that we even, that we double down on that, right? Evaluating responses is a part of this. All right. So, so again, ask an AI to help expand the ways you could describe something. How could I explain this differently to my colleagues, to my students? Um, what are some other ideas? It's a great example generator, but it also can do all of these things. And I think um, yeah, I think I did some of these before, so I'm just going to show you the list, right? I need new learning. I need, are my learning outcomes, my learning goals aligned with my course design? Could I improve my course design? Um, I mentioned before you could customize material, right? So I want a different set of problems for students who like football, who like music, or even for each individual student. Um, rubrics, handouts. So let me give you a few examples. So here's... A, activities, right? So I have a class, I need a game. I've, I've already given you the one game, um, but I have a class, right? So somebody said this earlier, I have a class in this, I have a lecture on this, here are the learning goals. I need a 10 minute activity. I, I wanna break up this lecture or I want a task that a group of students could do, right? So you could, you could try that. Um, or I need this assignment, right? So maybe you have an assignment Here's another way to get expand possibilities. Give me 10 ways to make this, this assignment more motivating. Now I saw in the chat, I, 
you know, a discussion about general education courses that students generally don't like, don't want to take. But even those courses, because I've taught non-majors for years, if if I have the right analogies, if I remind students, well, here's what you're going to do in the workplace, right? Look, I, I taught music, jazz. How is jazz history going to help you be a better manager, right? Well, I found ways to explain to students, you know, um, it's going to give you more to talk about in interviews. It's going to make you happy. There's all sorts of things, right? But I had to make sure I was doing that. So uh, are there ways to... to make this assignment better. So if you've got an assignment nearby on your computer, um, I would suggest that you, if you have a PDF, right, upload it into Perplexity, Claude, ChatGPT, they'll all take attachments and ask for 10 ways to make this better. Uh, give me some ways to make this more culturally relevant and different, right? Give, use one of these ways just to get some ideas, right? Um, how can I make my instructions more, invite, more inviting? How can I make this more motivating to students? Um, how could I give an example from a different culture? Because I have a lot of students from X or Y. Okay, so ask for ask for improvements to your assignment. Right, and here's an example of. In this case, I didn't ask for improvements. I just said, so analyze typical assignments for a college level data courses. And of course, now it can go to websites. Create me five new assignments that need to be done with or without AI assistance. Right, and then it gives me, right? It gives me a, ideas for new assignments. Notice that if I tell it you're a master teacher, I get little better results. Right? You have to tell it it's an expert, right? You know, try to make this assignment more interesting for students who have a particular interest in X or Y or during basketball season or whatever. And then I'll take some questions. Other questions about this? So just again, so the moment, what I want you to do is to be getting, getting ideas for how to make a particular assignment better, more interesting, motivating, and more culturally diverse, more relevant. Could you give me an example that I could use with a non-binary student? Could you write, give me a different analogy? Just to see if it can expand your thinking. Questions? If you want a generic prompt, I've put this one here. This one, it might let me, hang on, let me see if I can. Again, they're all on my website, but um, let me see if I can paste this one. Oh, good. It took it. Okay. So this is my generic prompt for getting a better um, assignment. Oops, that didn't work. Try it. Great. So it's on the screen. It's also in the chat. So the other thing you could do is you could try some variation of this, right? Notice you're an experienced professor, whatever, you know, and you could add more. You're super sensitive to students. You're the student's favorite teacher. <laughs> Those things make their response better. And then, right, what's the class? What's the content? Just attach the syllabus or just describe it. What's the learning goal you want to accomplish? Um, what type of students? And again, you could skip any of that, but all of that will help it. And then ask it to design an interactive activity, role play, assignment, problem set, test, test questions. How long? I want it to be 10 minutes in class. And then notice, list any material needed. Oh, you're going to need, you know, uh, index cards, and then produce nicely formatted handouts that I can print. If if you you could ask it for a link, right? It, produce nicely formatted handouts in Microsoft Word or Google Docs with a link. Give me a link so I can print them. Right? You have to be specific. Nicely formatted. <laughs> it actually makes them formatted better. And then, but I like explain your rationale. 
right? Why did you do that? Okay, so that's lots to do. So, oh, I like, yes, formatted for accessibility. Perfect. Right, you could, in fact, you could do that with everything you have, right? Help me for make sure I'm thinking, you know, what else have I not thought about? Is there something else in my students? You know, I could even say, oh, um, here's my, you know, here are the students I have in my class, here are the issues that I know about from the disability officer, or what other, you know, whatever, you know, learning uh, accommodations, that, whatever, you know, you could say, I make sure that, that so right, I could make one prompt that I could use all semester long, right? So, so some people call this a blueprint, so let's say I have a class and I've got three students who have this um, accommodation I have to make. So I, I create a prompt that says, okay, so I have a class, I've got 35 students, here are the names of this, or not the name, here are the ages of the students or the type of students, non-major or whatever, here are the accommodations. And then every time I do an assignment all semester long, I take the same prompt and I say, so here is my assignment for next week. Have I adequately thought about the accommodations I should make for these students? Right. I could use that prompt just for that class for that semester. So to Dimitri, you're absolutely right. It would be nice if students could do it. So our job is to help them try to do this. And I'm gonna again, I'm hope I'm I'm trying to build us a repertoire of ways to do that. Um, and I have a couple of them coming up. All right, other questions. Yeah, they're almost all using AI and not very critically. Yes, Marcia, we're going to get to that. Okay. Other questions about this before I move on? Anything about this? This is a template. I've given you some examples. There's more on the website, but is, but right, get it to design activities, improve activities, give you new ideas for introducing icebreakers, whatever. Yes. Okay, Marcia, don't let me not do that. Um, okay, there's another there's another version of the template to improve assignments, right? This one's interesting because this one is more about I, the, my previous book was you know not about technology, it's about you know motivation. Um, so how do you motivate students? What's the rationale, right? Make sure the task is clear. What were the what are the skills this will reinforce? Anticipate notice anticipate questions about how, when, and where this needs to be done. Maybe a checklist, right? So this is just a general way to make all of your assignments better. Right. What anticipate questions, um, make sure it's clear that this is why this is important. Because most of us get bored doing that. We think, ah, right? Because it's obvious to us. You're weird. You like school right. so much. You're still like here, right? So, that, like, yes, please. Right. So you, you need to right put yourself in the mind of the student. What what is a student going to think when they look? And that's hard to do because you're an expert and you love your field. So another thing that I can do with innovations is combinations, right? Write a 200 word process for removing a peanut butter sandwich from a toaster in the style of the King James Bible. I'll let you read the response. Not bad, huh? So notice the creativities in the prompt. So one thing that's hard for humans to do, but easy for AI is to say, okay, well, here are three weird things to put together. What would happen if I made a movie about um, a guy who loves peanut butter sandwiches, who's dating a girl, who, right, whatever. I mean, I just make the craziest thing up <clears throat> and it's like, oh, well, how do I do that? AI has no problem with that. So the combinations, so the creativity is in the weird combinations. All right, and I will get to, to exams and assessment in a minute, but I want to give you a couple of ideas for new uh, assignments. So one is you can have students make images, right? In this case, and these are some free tools at the top, at least. Copilot has a free, and again, on my website, I list all of these by category. Um, in this case, the, uh, um, the assignment was uh, come up with an analogy for the difference between British and American democracy. So in this case, the... Uh, American democracy is like a buffet and, sorry, British democracy is like a buffet and American democracy is like chicken or fish. And then come up with a visual uh, a visual analogy for that. Um, and so that's just an idea. Um, notice there are AI humanizers for images too, 
right? So the one on the right is the is the human eyes. These are both AI images, but this is a black marketing company. So again, the, the images you're seeing on your computer are now not only AI generated, they're customized to be the people that you would like, that you would trust, right? So we're starting, I mean, we're building this really weird world, not that it isn't weird already. Um, how about turn an explosion into art using AI? Right, because art is about seeing. We use paint brushes, we use paint. Those are different kinds of tools. So AI is a new tool for making art. All right, that would be an assignment. Or uh, for my European history class, right? I would like you to create a medieval photograph that has 13th century tropes. Um, can you cheat? I mean, could you go to the library and find a medieval photograph? No, but you could use an AI to create something that looks like one. So that's a kind of a fun assignment. I don't, right, that's harder to cheat. There's there's no, right, there's always somebody who's going to cheat. Um, but, or how about this? Uh, teach an AI how to paint like John Constable. This is from a colleague of mine. Uh, we said, this is, a, this is a, whole, a full day assignment because the AI will do pretty good on the first pass, but you have to tell the students, like the first pass is not going to be good enough. I want to know why are the people that small? Why is the horizon line there? Why is that tree so big? Right. And I need you to write a little essay about what did you what did you teach it and why? Why was this image better than the previous 50 that you that you had the AI do? Right. What is it about this that's better and more like John Constable's talk? So, right, they're doing all the things I want them to do in art history, but write the take-home essay, I just have AI do it. So here at least I'm iterating, I'm going back and forth. So no, it's not foolproof. Could a student cheat? I, there's there they will spend years trying to figure out how to cheat rather than do the right do the work. But it's an it's a more interesting assignment because I'm generating other skills. Right? I could do a data visualization, right? Make me a way, help me see this in a new way. Um slide deck, right? I could do the slides. Um, make me a, a, a pitch deck, right? So there are, these are mostly free tools that you see on the screen, again, on my website, um, under slides. Um, how about a chemistry assignment that I'd like you to make a short video about this chemical equation. Show me how the bonds are broken and how they reform, right? So that's an assignment that I can't do without some sort of AI video tool. And there are some free ones that could do that. Um, Right. Show me this. Right. I, we used to play with the little plastic models. Um, so um, so there's a whole set of other tools that you should try at some point. Uh, the links are on my website for images, for slides, for video, for songs. Suno, I think I played you a song a couple of sessions ago. Um, so you're not going to do all these now. But again, most like all of those in the middle are slides. All those on the right are are video. But you should at least go to. Um, you know, Pika or Sora, and at least play a little bit and see, oh, what could I have it do? And so my suggestion is, A, right, you've got to have some expertise first. It's fun. Um, do a little bit of that. But then think, what could I have students do with this tool? Because students, you remember the, da the data I showed you last week? 70% of students say, you didn't do a good enough job of training me how to use AI at work when I graduate. When I graduate, I need to know, be able, I need to know how to use a spell checker and a calculator too. So how do I use AI? So I'm going to need to know how to use AI video tools. So your class may not be about AI video. It might be an art history class or a chemistry class. But could you have an assignment? Because if, if you have an assignment that uses a video tool, Students are more likely to say, oh, you can. I, this is a skill you might need in the workplace. How do I make this video better? Right? They're going to see that's, a, that's an easier connection to make. Right? Questions about? All right. Um, there's an AI that makes graphic novels. This is my history of conducting for Cambridge University Press that I write. <laughs> I'm not a graphic novel person, but I could see that some students would like that. So again, it's an assignment that I could give to students that I couldn't give them three years ago, right? Create a graphic novel. I don't know, I don't, I don't draw using AI tools. And then you've got to think about what goes in the captions and how much goes right. That's a creative fun assignment rather than writing a paper. I point out of course, that writing in the workplace is much less prevalent than it used to be. People do slide decks now, 
right? My daughter's a writer, a comm major. She does, she works, right? And she says, mostly what we do are slide decks. We said, we write a, a one-page paragraph for a press release. Um, how about create an AI? Well, how do we fine tune an AI? Um, so the model for graphic novels is called Comic Factory. Um, AI, com I think it's what it's called, AI Comic Factory. Um, but but I, what, I, what I actually suggest if you want to do the graphic novel assignment is I would have them use a visual tool and then have them write the text and have them do it by hand um, because they'll get a better result. I mean, in fact, if you never mind, let them try AI Comic Factory. They'll get frustrated because you've got to do it all in one prompt and they'll realize it's kind of like a slide deck. I think I mentioned to you a few weeks ago that if you want to do a slide deck in AI, you can ask an AI to make a slide deck. But you get a much better slide deck if you say, make me an outline first. And then you say, provide images that could go in those. And then turn the images and the outline into slides by breaking it into steps. You get a much better answers. So this is fun. You could, you could make a GPT, uh, a little bot for your phone that will do something special like chat with Jesus or Satan. This is a real app, $3 a month. I love the fact that it's either Jesus or Satan. Like, I don't know who I want to talk to today. <laughs> Right. I don't know if there's talk to Muhammad or talk to Hillel. Um, right. Um, but that could be again. So how would you do that? What are the parameters? So you'd upload the Talmud, you'd upload the Quran, you'd say, OK, but what are the are there other things that you'd have to do to design this tool? Because, you know, if you can design an app, you're going to have an easier time getting a job. You don't have to be a CS major. Right. Uh, here are some tools for making video games. Uh, so let's start with the easy one. Do you remember the Oregon Trail? So Oregon Trail was a case study, right? If you don't take enough wheat or nails, you get eaten or you starve to death or whatever, right? So it's a case scenario. It's, a, it's what's called a text adventure game. Uh, so Zork or Oregon Trail. So students like these. This is fun. So create me a text adventure game about nursing, about, you know, uh, 18th century history, whatever, you know. Um, or... The second line there, video games, right? There's there's a whole bunch of tools that will actually help you design a working video game. You can even do it in Claude, kind of. Claude will do React script. Um, so make a simple video game or just make the assets, right? What would the images look like? Do the storyboard. Um, but this is kind of fun. Uh, simulations, right? What if, what if I I re, I change the play to, to do this instead of that? Uh, the picture there is of, um, in my Wagner class, I have students propose uh, how they would produce the ring, and I have them do presentations to the local opera company. And so I say, you have to have some assets. You know, what does it look like if you did Wagner's ring as a Western? You did it underwater, right? What would the set look like? What would the costumes look like? That sort of thing. So that's another assignment I could give to students. Um, stress test a plan. You have a business plan? Stress test it. There's the simulation game I gave you. Uh, how about historical LLMs, right? So these are, uh, so somebody said, well, how could I have students talk to ancient Romans? They don't have any, but I could upload all of Cicero and Caesar and all the Latin texts we have. And then I could see if students could, um, you know, or I could, I could ask students to do this. So take chat GPT and I want you to make a fine tune GPT that I can play with as the professor that allows me to interview, you know, 16th century clerics, you know, what, what is the source material that you would use to tune, right? You can have them do that. That'd be fun, right? And again, practical too, because it's exactly the kind of thing students are going to have to do. Not be programmers, but build a simple tool using AI. I had this discussion years ago and I said, you could have students do a little YouTube video. And at first I said, well, suppose students don't know how to do that. And I said, okay, you're right. So I asked one of my students, can you make a video on YouTube on how to make a YouTube video? And of course they did. And then it's like, yeah. And next year, everybody could always do it. So, um, all right. So we've talked about simulations, role-playing. Respond as if you were Mark Cuban. Help me practice my interview for my Microsoft job next week, right? So, I want you to think about, right? Somebody said, well, how do I get students to do this? So if I send students the prompt, I can say, so here's the prompt. You've had to produce a business program, but your, your business proposal, right, is for today. Think about, right, how do you anticipate 
all the things that could go wrong. So I said, you're a business major, you're an entrepreneurship major, you want to start your own company, great. So the reason you're doing this is because part of what you do when you when you start a new company is you have to anticipate what the competition's gonna do, how the politics might change. Suppose the cost of money goes up, right? That's called a stress test. So I could teach you about that, or I could have Mark Cuban teach you about that, because that's more fun. Um, so I write a prompt that says, you're Mark Cuban, stress test, do this, do that, et cetera. But I can also grade this, right? I can ask the, the I can in the prompt, I can say, ask the student follow-up until you think the student has adequately prepared for all of the reasonable possibilities that could disrupt their business in the next two years. And don't let them finish this conversation. And when they're done, say, you have completed the task. And then when I get, when they turn it in the PDF, it says you've completed the task. I say, full marks. Or I could ask them to grade their dialogue, right? So I did this as, a, this as I had students talk to Isaac Newton and I gave them the first prompt, which is up there. And then Isaac Newton responds. And then I say, so now I want you to ask 10 follow-up questions. But what I'm gonna grade are the follow-up questions. I'm not gonna grade Isaac Newton or the AI's Isaac Newton. I'm gonna ask you, did you ask the right follow-up? So if there's no empirical evidence, how is this science? Right, that's a, that's a pretty good follow-up. I, I didn't think of that myself, but right, so we get, all right. Um, so right, so so that's a dialogue that, game that students could do. Um, there are also ones that are already preset, like Hello History, Character AI. Right, there's a whole bunch of these. They're listed on my site. Um, be careful, some of them, right, because a lot of them are porn sites, right, because that's what people want to talk to, right? They want to have AI girlfriends. But some of them, like Hello History, right, they're they're set up to mostly be historical figures, but most of them do. A, like character AI has a bunch of his that has Einstein, et cetera, but it also allows you to write. So this is obviously disturbing. Um, so to, to Christie's suggestion, right? So there, there are two things I can do. One is I could write, I mean, I'm going to talk about grading in a minute, but notice what I said about these assignments is that I could, I could build into the prompt either a mastery level, like don't let students finish until they've at least asked 10 good questions. And I give them a rubric for what good questions are. Or don't let students, you know, don't give them a grade until they've completed four years as the president. Right. So I can I can give it a way to say, here is when the task is is completed. Um, all right. So questions about new AI assignments before, and then I'll talk about uh, grading. Any any other ideas? Um so uh, Christy's question, a second question, does your college provide one of the, so because at the moment, right, ChatGPT, right, most of you used free ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini or, or Meta to do the simulation. They're pretty good. I mean, at the moment, the free AIs will do quite a lot of this. Um, the other thing you can do, this requires a paid account, but you can create a custom GPT. So instead of sending your students the prompt, let's say I want to hide the prompt, right? I want to hide the fact that they're going to be graded and they won't be able to, right? That you're going to get whatever. So I can put all that, I can write the prompt and I put it into a, a chat with, with G, chat GPT. And then I save it as a GPT and I send the students the link to that. And the students don't then see the prompt. They just have to interact with the bot, right? So they can do that for free. I have to pay to be able to make a custom GPT, but students don't need to be able to pay to use it. Does that help? I'm, I'm scrolling through questions here before I go on. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any AI that really do well at creating multi-panel multi comics. I, I think that's that's correct. And which is also, which is good because otherwise it would be too easy. Yeah, and to Scott, right? In fact, I I did a quiz. I, I think I did, did this the first day about all the things you're worried about, um, you know, ethics, you know, right and wrong answers, you know, hallucinate. And this and it's it's actually the list that I got from Wiki, from Wikipedia that people were you know, the things questions people had about Wikipedia. Um, all right, Play Lab is free. Good. Okay.
language learning, there are a whole bunch, Duolingo is, you know, that's actually the one that you probably have seen, but there's, there's a whole bunch of these that, you know, some of them are like Mondly is virtual reality. You go to Paris with the headset and then it teaches you French. Um, so I think I've talked about this now a lot where you run a simulation or a game and then the AI uses a rubric to analyze it and grade. But Mizzou is a, is a platform that actually does this all for you. It's not free, but uh, it, right? We're going to see lots of these tools. My guess is they'll start being integrated into your LMS before you know it. So could this be the end of courses? It, if it is, right, because I could, I could give you AI modules to do that are interactive and self-paced, but certainly not going to be the end of teachers, right? We're still going to have to, you know, I mean, I, I, but I do think that the, the here, sit and listen to my lecture. I mean, I thought that about the internet too. So, um, so, so Candace has asked a good question, right? So you've got five courses a semester. Um, so my suggestion is with everything I've been doing for, you know, 20 years in pedagogy is, you know, start small, you know, do one thing, right? You, you're not going to do everything all at once. Um, if you're teaching five courses a semester, I'd probably start with something that makes your life easier, like um, make my assignment better, make it easier to grade. Give me five ways I can make this assignment easier to grade. Or I'd start with grading, which I'm about to do. Um, but I think, right, assignments are now, we have to just accept they're all AI assignments. Unless I, I'm going to convince students that they're going to do these push-ups the hard way. Um, so let's talk about um, grading and feedback. So I think of this as a compliment. I don't want to replace all human grading or feedback with AI, but it's a scalable in a way that you're not if you've got five classes a semester, right? It's also customized and immediate. Remember, the best teacher is not you. It's a tennis net because a tennis net is immediate, objective, and small. So one of the ways I've gotten, I've used AI to make my feedback better is I often give student, I write all the feedback, and then I ask the AI, I say, so use these rules of good pedagogy to make better feedback. So right, don't give them six things to do, give them one thing to do at a time, right, whatever. And so I get shorter, make my feedback clear, make it specific to their writing. So it's a great tool. So I can now not worry about, not just not worry about spelling, but I can just kind of talk. Here's what I think about the essay. Turn that into good feedback, right? Um, but there are ways that we could give this to students. So one of the things I suggest is right, see these these assignments, you're thinking, yeah, but students aren't gonna do that. They're just gonna use it to write the thing. So how about if you do this? Here is my assignment, and here is a prompt I'm going to email you that you can use to make your work better. And so either I could hide that with a GPT or I could just send them the prompt. And so the prompt then says, um, in fact, there's a prompt on my website that says, create a prompt that I can use to make a feedback tool for students. Right. So are there references? Is there a way to make this better? Uh, obvious. Right. Um, but I can also get feedback. Right. I'm about. So let's say students, someday you're going to have to go to an IRS audit. Well, hopefully not. But if you did or you have to go for an interview or you're 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 having to meet your in-laws. Right. What how might the in-laws respond to this? How might an IRS auditor or my insurance company respond to this memo about what, right? It's a great way to get feedback. And so I teach students how to do this. How would a Republican or a Democrat or a person who's different than I am respond to this? What misunderstandings might I anticipate? Or look at the last one. Create feedback that will challenge me. That's a great one to say. So before you hurt you, you send your essay in run this feedback through the AI, right? Include feedback with inaccurate information and feedback that looks, so here's a way to do this. I can give you this prompt, that third prompt on the page, and I need you to save the chat in a, G, in a, in a PDF, right? So as you have to do it with, a chat, with an AI and then save all of that, but I've included there, include feedback with inaccurate information, feedback that looks like a compliment that really, so the student then has to process with the AI how their essay is and what feedback might make it better. Obviously, it could be a writing tutor, right? How could I change the tone of the essay? So these are all prompts I would give to students, just like at the writing center, you might give them ways of doing things. Um, so, so this is right. Think of think of being a designer of feedback. This is a large part of what we do because students learn through the tennis, they learn through feedback. So, I could say. 
you know, here's here's the the here's a tutor, create a tutor for students. Um, but this is the prompt I was just mentioning, right? Create an AI prompt that can help support students learning in this assignment. So I give it the assignment and I give it this prompt. The prompt should should provide suggestions and tutoring, but should not provide the answers or do the work. So think about this. I can now give students an assignment due Tuesday. I can give them a problem set and I give them the prompt that has, and says, so you can upload the assignment into AI with this prompt and then get help, right? Um, and yeah, attachments don't have to be PDFs. They can be other things. Copilot likes Microsoft, right? Um, but they can be Word docs. PDFs are just, you know, easy to send around. So did you see, does this make sense? Any any thoughts about this, right? Um, so that's another way to create feedback. Um, I'm gonna skip that because tutors I've talked about. Um, let me skip that too. Um, so there are some platforms that I would suggest. Um, the one that I like the best is AI Tutor Pro. I'm gonna put that in the chat. This is Canadian, um, but here you upload some content. And so I'd be, I'd be totally happy sending students here. Go to this place, you wanna learn about this. And again, I've got to, it's my job to convince you that you need to know about the Krebs cycle and why it's important, but I don't have to teach it to you. This, right? And there, there are a number of these, but this one's pretty good. Um, all right, so let's talk about grading because Grading is a place that I would start for many of you who are overwhelmed, right? So provide detailed and constructive feedback to students in my voice using the rubric. Notice that I have to calibrate this. So you could use a rubric like this, right? Or um, I have a prompt on my, I have both of these on my website. One is here is the thing. The other is this rubric will actually guide, the help the AI will guide you through the process, right? So it'll say, well, what's the assignment? What do you want me to grade? What's the rubric? Um, I need you to what, give me an example, right? Give me examples of good, of A, B, and C papers. Uh, give me examples of your feedback. So you have to do a little bit of calibrating. Um, and if you don't want to do this, or right, there's other people who have done this in your field, maybe. Again, you could find one. Uh, but also co-grader, there's a whole list of them on my website of, of that will kind of guide you through the process and you can kind of tailor, so, oh no, that's that's too harsh. No, I wouldn't give that feedback. But what I do with students is I give them the choice. I say, so look, you know, I've got 50 of these to grade. It's gonna take me all week. You can either have feedback today from the AI grader that grades like me, I will read them, I will check them, we can argue, we can do all of that. Or you can wait two weeks and I'll finally get these back to you. But most students, right, know that more immediate feedback is more useful. Um, and so 99% of my students say, yes, I'll take the AI feedback. Some of them then come and argue with me. It's like, I don't like this grade, et cetera, et cetera. And we go through, but it turns out the AI, right? I gave it a thousand papers and a thousand responses. So I gave it a lot. It does grade like me. It's more consistent than I am because right after a bad meal or in the afternoon or right before lunch, I'm a little sleepy. I grade a little harder. We all do. So, um, you know, again, I would give students choice. I'd be transparent. Um, but this is if you wanted to do have, have an AI do all of your grading. There's lots of in-between, right? I, I mentioned before, I do the first draft. I have AI give me feedback and then fine tune it for the individual student because AI hey, can also remember everything that happened last semester or the last essay I graded. Um, but most of us give too much feedback. And so I find that AI is both more consistent, but also a little bit better at that. All right, questions. Interesting, yeah, thanks Roxanne. Yeah, they like, they thought it was more critical, yeah. Um, and. So you can actually, again, you can you can you can make the feedback more critical, less critical, more wordy, more succinct. Uh, but what I like, what I mostly do with AI feedback is I say only give them one thing to work on at a time, because I of course give them twelve things, and that's twelve too many. Um, so you can also use AI for accreditation, right? Uh, your accreditation will never be the same, right? What are the things that you always wanted to measure? Oh, there's like a thousand essays to rewrite. 
AI can do that. Reread all the freshman essays and tell me how many of them meet the standard, um, right? Uh, performance tasks that align with the learning objectives, right? AI is good at all of these things. Um, scaffolding, right? How could students work on this project? Uh, checklists, right? Many of us give checklists um, for assignments. I no longer have to do that by hand. The AI ones are pretty good. I, I then, I read them, I check them. Uh, AI can make rubrics. I have a prompt for that, um, or can refine my rubric, give me ideas for rubric. But if you need a rubric for accreditation and you don't have it, right? Um, when I have it make tests, I don't have it make the whole test. Again, I break it into steps. So I want 25 multiple choice questions about this. I want 15 of these, four of those, and then I, right, I pick the ones that I like or if I wanna make customized versions of tests, that it can do. Here's a test, I need a makeup test, right? Um, but you can also say, give me ideas for a comprehensive exam for the syllabus for my course, a comprehensive project, um, something that students could do in class, something they could do at home, but they couldn't do with AI, right? Those kinds of things. So, um, Oh, yeah, it's actually got it coming up with wrong, right? So again, the more specific. So I need multiple choice questions. I need really, really tough false answers to put in, plus the one, et cetera. Um, but here's my, here's my whole prompt, because I've, again, I've asked it for 25 easy, 25 short, 50, whatever. I've given it. And so, again, if you want uh, prompts about that, you can look at that. Um, program assessment, you could have it do your apartment, department accreditation report. That would be fun. Um, or you could have it improve your report before you send it off to WASC, whatever you are out there. Um, what might the committee find objectionable or confusing, right? Or that's better. I need I need store I need examples to put in my report. It can do that. Uh, I need I need examples from student YouTube on campus social media for things that really show that our students are getting this. Or I could I want to practice the accreditation visit, right? <laughs> Here you are, I could actually do that too. Um, so it's got lots of uses there um, for assessment as well. All right, I know it's a lot. What else did I not do that you thought I would do that we didn't do? Questions? I would, so if you have a lot of students, your first thought is obviously efficiency. But the other thing I would ask is to think not just about efficiency, but is there is there something that I couldn't do before that I could do now? Is there some kind of assignment, some kind of, I couldn't assign that because it would take me too long to grade them. But now I can use this to do something. So, you know, so, uh, so Jamie, right? I mean, like that lawyer, right? The lawyer who got into trouble for using AI he got into trouble because he didn't check the work, right? If he'd had an intern do it, he would have gotten into just as much trouble because it was wrong, right? So in the same way that you would have your TAs do something and you would check it, right? Or you'd have assistants or you'd use a spell checker on your writing. I think this is a compliment, right? I don't think you're gonna outsource all of this and just hand it over, but this can certainly speed up the process in the same way that using a word processor sped up the process. I mean, again, that's that's my rationale and I'm sticking with it. Other questions, thoughts? What did we not talk about? So I was, I was saying is again, think of, think of what could you now do that you couldn't do before? How could AI help you improve your teaching by saying, oh, now I, I can do customized assignments or I can now do this kind of assignment that I couldn't grade or I could now do a simulation that I didn't have the computer skills. I've been doing games for 20 years but I always had to have like, you know, a TA or like someone in the learning and learning center. I need a couple of programmers to do this. In fact, I found them on my computer. Like they no longer work because they're like 20 years old. But right. I had a I had a jazz simulation. Right. Put together a band, the bass player, the trumpet player. Right. And have them play together and get them get them all to play on the same style. And don't put Dizzy Gillespie in that band because Miles Davis. Right. And I had them. And so I designed these games, but it took forever. And so now maybe this is an easier way to do some things that you couldn't do before. So 
So I hope it's useful. I know this is controversial, uh, but I, I, again, if you want to really engage in the conversation, I think the first thing you got to do is is to to try this. Um, yeah, Roxanne, I think they're all all of the big four, like I've said. So you have to, you, with every any task, you have two choices. One is use the smartest model, the big four, but you have to give it instructions. Or Google best LLM for rubrics, and there's probably a bot. There's probably a GPT that some faculty member has done that's right a rubric maker, right? So you'd go to Chat GPT and you'd search the GPTs for rubric maker. Um, by the way, I think both Canvas and Blackboard, if they haven't yet, they're about to put AI rubric makers into their LMS. All right, Jose, it's about time. Yes. Thank you so much for this presentation. And thank, every, thank you everyone else for attending today's webinar. Uh, please check the chat for the survey link that's going to be dropped in one more time and completed to receive a copy of your response, which can serve as your proof of attendance. For any issues, you can contact support at cvc.edu. Um, this is the last webinar for the semester, um, so be on the lookout for next semester. You can find our webinars in our At One site. Um, the recording for this webinar will be available in a few days, um, as well as the slides and the documents that uh, Jose shared. Um, that's it for today. Thank you so much for a great, another great AI presentation. Thank you all for attending. Thanks, everybody. Good luck.